This is a Clark University podcast. Now, in a moment, I'm going to officially begin these proceedings with a simple declaration. But I need your help. I need you all to roar. Don't hold back. Like, oh, woohoo is not going to do it. For all of the achievements, accomplishments, and things that these students have overcome, for all that the faculty, deans, vice presidents, and trustees behind me have contributed to the life of this university, I need a full-throated roar. Okay? I can't do it more than once, so please don't disappoint me. You ready? It is my great privilege as president of the university and my true honor as an alumnus who 36 years ago sat where you sit today to receive my own Clark degree to declare these ceremonies open. When we first stepped onto this campus, we were illuminated with the possibilities of new talents, new hobbies, new friendships, new love. Sitting in the Neller on that hot summer Thursday, we were filled with excitement of what our next four years of Clark were going to look like. We had a normal fall semester filled with fun events and lots of freedom until March came. It was inevitable that the undergraduate student speech at Clark University's 119th commencement on Sunday would reflect on the COVID-19 pandemic. The students who walked across the stage and received diplomas on the campus screen were just first years when COVID swept in and changed everything. In her address to undergraduate peers, Glory Phipps, a philosophy major, found a way to turn their pandemic struggle into an analogy for growth. Glory invoked the artistry of late rapper Tupac Shakur, who wrote a poem about a rose that grew through concrete, a powerful and beautiful being that preserved through challenging conditions. We are forced to become accustomed to the COVID pandemic. The concrete, it is thick and heavy. Our normal first year turned into zoo meetings in our living room, bedroom, porch, restaurants, even at the park. The world stopped, especially at Clark. We needed a community, and we began the work to bring Clark back. Our bud began to grow out of the cement. New beginnings, a new era of Clark. This was unfamiliar and uneasy, but we made it through by focusing on our passions. We fought for issues we believed in. We began to use our voices for the greater good. Graduate student worker rights, BLM, mutual aid, menstrual equity, gender neutral bathrooms, and many more. We became advocates for a better future. Then our bud blossomed into a rose a beautiful red flower covered in thorns. Beautiful yet strong, we blossomed into leaders. We created a new culture that encourages community and care across all groups and walks of life. We blossomed to be here. We became the rose that grew from concrete. Congratulations, class of 2023. a producer in Clark's communications office, and this is Challenge Change. Sunday's commencement ceremony granted 590 undergraduate degrees, 681 master's degrees, 29 doctoral degrees, and three honorary degrees. Those graduates included 329 international students representing 24 different countries. In an address to graduate students, 
Idris Lawali Abdu, who received his MBA, spoke about the transformative power of education. He recalled growing up in Niger, where higher education was a luxury most people could not afford. Imagine growing up in a community where you and your friend had dreams you knew were impossible to achieve. That was my reality growing up in Niger. But I was fortunate enough to pursue my education in Morocco, France, and now here in the United States as a Fulbright Scholar. Along the way, I discovered my passion for education and its ability to change lives. I share my story with you today because I have witnessed firsthand how education can change lives. It has instilled in me a sense of responsibility to give back to my community, and I urge each of us to do the same. My personal journey is just one example of how education can change lives. We have the skills and knowledge to excel in our careers. I urge you to go beyond that. Use your education to impact the world positively. We all have the power to make a difference. These graduates are stepping out into a world a bit different than the one Clark President David Fithian emerged into with his Clark degree in 1987. Technology has spurred massive changes in daily life since then. The newest Clark alumni are navigating a world in which artificial intelligence spurs questions about what is real and what isn't. I can tell you with authority that the 1,303 graduates who are assembled before us are real. They have experienced real learning, overcome real challenges, made real friendships, and are ready to pursue real ambitions that will have real impact in the world. Members of your class originated and published a magazine that celebrates the talents and accomplishments of our Maine South neighbors. We're among the Clark Chorus members who performed Verdi's Requiem in Carnegie Hall, a first appearance in this iconic hall for our university. <laughs> Helped Clark win two divisional championships in the National Esports Collegiate Conference Finals. Used GIS technology to turn satellite imagery into maps that aided recovery efforts following the devastating earthquake in Turkey and Syria. But the world changes, as do we. We saw that dramatically in the past three years. So being educated is really about knowing and navigating what we don't know, and what we don't understand fully enough. You came to Clark looking for answers about subjects that interest you, about yourself, and about the world. And I hope you found some. But I hope even more that you leave Clark able to ask more different and better questions. Artificial intelligence isn't the only challenge facing today's graduates. They must reckon with a world that has become less equal and more polarized over the last 50 years, according to Robert Putnam, a renowned author and the Malkin Professor of Public Policy at the Harvard University John F. Kennedy School of Government. He delivered the commencement address. Americans have become much less connected with one another much more isolated, much more lonely, much less neighborly, much less civically engaged, much less trusting. Nowadays, we lock our doors. We volunteer less and are less charitable. Although we are much wealthier overall, we give less of our wealth now than our predecessors did 60 years ago, and we are less generous people. So what does that gloomy history of these musings of an old man have to do with you on this bright, sunny afternoon, you might ask. I've just described the fearfully polarized, deeply unequal, unjust, fragmented America that my generation has bequeathed to you. And yet, I'm hopeful that your generation can turn these trends around because Americans just like you have done so before. If anybody's going to do it, it's going to be you. Amid the jubilation of the day, Clarkies shared some memories 
and some advice for the new students who will arrive later this summer. What's your favorite floor of the library? Second floor. I, I don't like to be super quiet. What kind of advice would you give first year students? Mm. Be a part of the Clark Visual yeah. and Performing Arts program. Follow us on Instagram, Clark UVPA. Uh, go to all of our shows. Explore yourself while you're here and try everything you can because it's a quick four years and you never know what you might like. I'd say meet as many people as possible. Yeah. Do as much as you can, get involved as much as possible. I would like take risks, take classes that you don't think you're really that interested in, like find cool things to do while you have the time to do them because you're really going to surprise yourself. It's going to be amazing. To learn more about Clark University, visit clarku.edu. Challenge Change is produced by Andrew Hart and Melissa Hansen for Clark University. Find other episodes wherever you listen to podcasts. One, two, three. Clark! TTYL.